In this video, we're focusing on how to write the names and formulas for some special compounds, uh, particularly acids and simple hydrocarbons. So we're going to focus on acids, first of all. Generally speaking, when you find uh, a formula that starts with hydrogen, that's probably going to be an acid. We'll focus on inorganic acids in this lesson, just simple acids. What you want to do is focus on the anion that follows that hydrogen. So in the formula, you'll see an H, the hydrogen, and then something else, some anion, like a Cl or a ClO3 or something like that. Focus on the anion there at the end of the acid. And look at its name. Based on the suffix of that anion, you're going to change that suffix to something else. okay? And then you'll put the word acid at the end. And here's a little chart that shows you how to change that suffix. So if the suffix is IDE, you're going to change it to ic and then put hydro on the front of it. So for example, Cl is called chloride, so it's called hydrochloric acid. Um, you'll have a lot of anions that have the, the suffix eight. Well, eight gets changed to ic in the case of an acid. So NO3 is the nitrate ion. So HNO3 is nitric acid. There are a lot of anions that end with ite. Ite gets changed to us, O-U-S. So for example, NO2 is nitrite. So HNO2 would be called nitrous acid. Let's try a few examples here and see if we can figure out how to, to do these on our own. So here's a, a very common acid. Uh, once again, we just ignore the H for right now and focus on the anion that uh, C2H3O2 is called acetate, isn't it? So that 8 gets changed to ic, so it's acetic, acetic acid. We sometimes uh, use that as the name for vinegar. Uh, dilute acetic acid is often called vinegar. Very common. How about HF? Once again, focus on the F. F is the ion called fluoride. And in the case of an ending with ide, we take off the ide and put ic on there. But we put hydro on the, on the front of that, don't we? So it's called hydrofluoric acid. Hydrofluoric acid. Very uh, reactive acid. It actually reacts with glass. It eats through glass. How about H2SO3? Once again, focus on that SO3. That's the polyatomic ion that we call sulfite, right? So ite changes to us, as you might recall. So it looks like it will be called sulfous acid, right? Well, for sulfur-containing compounds, uh, sulfur-containing acids, and for phosphorus-containing acids too, we actually stick an extra syllable on there to make it sound a little bit better. So it's not sulfous, it's actually sulfurous acid. So th that same idea, just, just have that extra syllable on there, sulfurous acid. H3PO4, once again, PO4 is called phosphate. So eight changes to ic, but like I said, phosphorus containing acids have that extra syllable. We call it phosphoric. Not phosphic, phosphoric acid, which is actually an acid that's often found in uh, colas. If you drink Coca-Cola, some other soda like that, it may have phosphoric acid in there. Here's another one, HCN. Focus on the CN. That's called cyanide. And then we change the ide to ic, and then we put hydro on the front of it. So it becomes hydrocyanic acid. So hopefully you can name some of these acids. Now, there's another type of formula that we're going to look at, and these are simple organic hydrocarbons. In this video, we're going to keep it very simple. Organic hydrocarbons have carbon and hydrogen. That's why they're called hydrocarbons, you know, hydrogen and carbon. And the number of carbons that you see in that formula is going to co correspond to a numerical prefix. Now, several of these prefixes may look familiar to you, especially as you get toward the bottom of the uh, slide here, like the pent and the hex and the hept and the oct. Those look pretty obvious. But the first four 
very likely are new for you. If you have a compound with one carbon atom, that represents the prefix meth. And two represents the prefix eth. And three represents prop. And four represents the prefix but. And of course, those, those others probably look more familiar to you. Well, we use those prefixes to represent the number of carbons. So in the case of alkanes, alkanes are basically hydrocarbons that have this format. However many carbons they have, the number of hydrogen, hydrogens will be 2x plus 2, or 2 times the number of carbons plus 2. So here's an example of that. Now, how many carbons do we have here? We only have one carbon. So what's the prefix for one carbon? Meth. So this is called methane, which is a gas you've probably heard of before. That's what's often called natural gas. Or how about this one, C2H6? It's got that same format. It's got two carbons. Well, two times two plus two is six. So this is an alkane. And what's the prefix for two carbons? Well, it's eth. So this is called ethane. Same deal here, same, same pattern. And look at C3H8. It's the same pattern. We have three carbons, and eight is you know two times three plus two, eight hydrogens. So what's the prefix for three carbons? Well, that would be prop. So we call this propane. And then we have C4H10. Same pattern, isn't it? 4 times 2 is 8, plus 2 gets us 10 hydrogens. How many, uh, or what's the prefix for 4 carbons? It's bute, so this is called butane, which you've probably heard of butane and, and propane, most likely. Now, there are other, there are lots of classes of, of organic compounds. In this class, in this course, we're going to keep it very simple. AP chemistry does not cover organic chemistry. Uh, it's useful to know some of these very simple uh, formulas for AP chemistry or for general chemistry as well. Uh, how about alkenes? Their formulas are however many carbons you have, there'll be twice that many number of hydrogens. So we have C2H4. That's an alkene because it's got that format CxH2x. So how many carbons? I see two carbons here. So that prefix is eth, isn't it? Well, this is called ethene. Since it's an alkene, it ends with ene. Alkanes end with ane. So hopefully that's easy to keep straight. C6H12. Got that same format there. 6 is hex, right? So this is called hexene. I see the pattern? How about C4H8? Same CxH2x. It's an alkene. So four carbons would be bute, right? So that's called butene. C5H10, same pattern. We've got five carbons. That's pent, right? So this, is, this compound is called pentene. I hope you learned something from the video. Uh, my name is Jeremy Krug, and this completes Unit 0, which is not an official unit in AP Chemistry. I just made it up on my own. But these are the skills that you need in order to succeed in the nine units of AP Chemistry. Thanks for joining me. If you aren't subscribed yet, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I've been teaching chemistry for well over 20 years now, and I hope uh, I can share what I've been able to acquire over the last uh, many years with you. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again.